Hi, in this video we are going to learn how to capture data from HTML tables on websites. In the second video in this tutorial we will learn how to use captured data to populate Excel files. Let's start off by examining the goals of this automation solution. Here is the Excel file we want to populate. It lists a number of different currencies. Each row will store the dollar exchange rates with those currencies captured at a different time. So we have one column for the time at which the data was captured and a column for the interest rate for each of the currencies listed. Our solution will include a workflow that will add a row to this spreadsheet whenever it is executed. Practically, a business might set up an event handler to run that workflow once a day, for example, to collect the exchange rates at the same time every day. We will take the exchange rate data from this website. Note that if we use this address, it shows the exchange rates for tens of currencies against a United States dollar. Our solution will capture this data and then populate the Excel spreadsheet only with the exchange rates we want to collect. The first step in our solution will be to open this website in the browser. For this demonstration we will use Microsoft's Edge browser. Create a new step in the workflow. We will name it Open Browser. To launch Edge, we will use the execute command line function from the command's built-in service. For the command, enter the path to the Edge browser. For the parameter, enter the URL to the website with the extension to specify United States dollars so that we don't have to select our source currency from inside the site, which would be more complicated. Save the project. We should test that the workflow does open the site. We need to close the browser first so that we can test the workflow properly. Run the workflow. The browser opened to the site as expected. We can return to editing mode. Now we need to capture the table as a screen element so that we can use its values. Click to capture a new screen element. Note that the capture wizard does not let us select the entire table. We can only select a cell within the table. Select any cell in the table. The details of the cell we captured are shown. However, we are not interested in the cell at all. If you look at the hierarchy on the side, above the screen element representing the cell we captured is a generic HTML table element. That is the screen element we are interested in. To simplify our asset tree, we will hide the screen element for that cell by turning off available for use. Note that it is grayed out in the hierarchy of the left. We should rename the table element. Let's call it FX table. To test that the table can be found, click locate. Quickly switch to the edge window so we can see whether the table was located. We see that the table is located and the success message is displayed. We could have relied on the success message alone, but it is useful to visually verify that the element we wanted is located properly. Click Save. If we open up the hierarchy for the table in the Assets panel, we eventually find the Rows text property. This property is in fact a list of rows. It will be populated with the contents of the table. Save the project. 
Remember that we need to record the date and time for each row in the Excel sheet. Looking at the website, we can see that the date and time at which the exchange rates were captured is written here. Let's capture that. We will rename it as date time. Save the project. We will run the workflow again and then make sure that the properties of our screen elements are populated as expected. Click Run Workflow. Open up the Assets tree and find the HTML table. We can see that the table is populated with 168 rows. We can't see the contents of the table here, but at least we know that the table data is captured. Let's find the date time element. We can see that it was populated with the date and time. In the next video, we will populate the Excel file with the data captured from the HTML table. Thank you for watching.